Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over navigation for the Mirage F1 EE. Just a quick note, this is not a full navigation video. I'm not going to be going over stuff like VOR and TACAN because I already went over all of that in my other navigation video for the CE version of the Mirage. This video is just going over the INS panel and also the navigation panel because it is a little bit different than the one in the CE. All right, let's get started. First, I'm gonna go over the INS panel. This is where you set up your waypoints that you can fly to. Here's the power switch for the panel. AR is off and VEI is standby. Calibrate and test are for the ground crew, so you don't need to worry about those. All the modes that start with A are alignment modes. ALN is normal alignment. ALR is rapid alignment and ALCM is stored heading. I'm not gonna be going over alignment in this video. If you want to know how to do that, that is in my startup video. Nav is the normal mode that you'll be using and SEC is the emergency mode. I'm not sure what the emergency mode does. When you switch to it, it turns on this light here, but besides that, I'm not sure, so I would just leave it in nav mode. Then there's this switch here. This changes what is shown on the display. CDI doesn't do anything. STS is status, that is for the INS alignment, and I go over that in the startup tutorial. VSRT, on the left side it shows your ground speed, and on the right side it shows your true heading. PP is present position, that shows the current coordinates of your airplane. The L slash G shows the distance to the current selected waypoint and POS, or position, shows the coordinates of the selected waypoint. This is your keypad where you enter the numbers, and this is the wheel here where you can select through your different waypoints. I'll go over these buttons later. There's also a brightness switch. If you have it up, it's day. In the middle, it's night. And on the bottom, it tests all the lights. That's an overview of the panel. Now let's go over how to create a waypoint. This panel can hold nine waypoints. Waypoint number one, is usually the starting position for the plane in the mission editor. If you switch this mode to POS, when you flip through this dial here, it will show you the coordinates. You can see the only waypoint I have programmed in is waypoint one because that's my starting position. So if you want to create a waypoint, first make sure the power mode is in nav and make sure that this dial is on POS. Then you use this dial to select the waypoint. Let's make waypoint two. Then you need to get the coordinates for your waypoint. On the F10 map, find where you want the waypoint to be. Let's say I want to put a waypoint over this building in Kobuleti. What you do is you hold left alt on your keyboard and then left click, and it will drop a little blue circle and it will bring up this menu. This menu will show the coordinates that you want. The coordinates that the Mirage F1 uses is these ones right here, lat long decibel minutes. These are the ones that we need. First, let's type in the north coordinates. So you type N for north, and then you type in, let me see, 41, eight, uh, 48. And then after the decimal, you can see there's three numbers. In the Mirage, you only need to type in one, so I'll just type in four. So you can see 41484 four, and click insert. So that's the north waypoint. Now I need to put in the east waypoint. So I'm going to put in east. And for east, you have to start with a zero. And let me see what it says here, 4146. And once again, you only need one number after the decimal. So here is a nine. And you click insert. And once you're done with this tab, you can click OK. And you can see now I have waypoint one and waypoint two. That is how you create a waypoint. Now let's go over how to navigate with a waypoint. Make sure the power switch is in nav. Then select the waypoint you want to fly to. I want to go to waypoint two. In the middle of the screen here, it shows your selected waypoint. You can see it shows waypoint one, even though I have two selected on the dial. In order to choose your selected waypoint for navigating, you click the asterisk. Now I have waypoint two selected for navigating. If I switch this switch over to the L, you can see waypoint two is 7.9 nautical miles away. Let's just check to make sure that is accurate. So I think it was this building here. And then let me put it to my plane. And you can see eight nautical miles, so that looks accurate. Once you've got your waypoint selected, you come to the navigation indicator and you need to have, you see this little arrow right here? You need to make this pointing to the second dot from the top. So point to the end. You use your mouse click on this outer ring here and you can move this arrow. So I point it to the second dot from the top at the end 
now we're in navigation mode. Also, make sure this switch here is pointing to the diamond, so it is using a magnetic compass. If it's pointing to the dot, it will be doing true heading, so you want to do magnetic heading. Once you got that done, you can see now my big white arrow is pointing to the waypoint, and you can see it's about 8 nautical miles away, which is pretty accurate. Now let's get up into the air and see if our waypoint takes us to that building. You can see I am 0 nautical miles, so I should be right on top of it now. And it is a tiny bit off, but you can see it basically took me pretty much to that building. The next thing to go over is INS fixed points. If you have flown a more modern jet in DCS, like the F-18 or the F-16, the INS system also has a GPS that updates it to make sure it's accurate. In the Mirage, the INS does not have a GPS, it is just the INS alone. So the problem is that as you fly over time, it can become less accurate and it can drift. If you're flying for a long time, the drift can be pretty significant. What a fixed point is, is where you have a waypoint over a certain destination that's really obvious, like a big building or a lake or something. And when you fly over it, you click this button on the INS panel to kind of realign or update the INS system. So let's go over how to make a fixed point. First, you need to choose a really obvious location for your fixed point to be. Let's say I want my fixed point to be on this lake. I need to get the coordinates, so I'm going to hold left alt on my keyboard again and left click. And here's my coordinate panel. I need to choose a waypoint to be the fixed point. Let me flip this over to position. So I already have waypoint 2 used, so I'll do waypoint 3 as my fixed point. So let me type in the coordinates like I did before. I'll do north and 41543 and insert and then east 0 4148 1 insert. Then I'll click the asterisk to select it as my active waypoint. I can get rid of this panel. This is the fixed point button. What I'm going to do is when I fly over the lake, when I'm in the middle of the lake, I'm going to click this button and this will be my fixed point. So let's do that now. Here's the lake. I'm going to fly over the middle of the lake. And once I'm over the middle, I'm going to click the fixed point button. And then I need to decide if I want to use that as my fixed point. The validate button will light up. If I decide that was pretty accurate and I want to use that as my fixed point, I can click validate. Or if I decide I want to try again, then you can click clear. When you're doing your fixed points, one thing that might be useful is to use this switch uh, in this position here, the LG position that shows the distance to your waypoint. This can be useful because it can help you tell if the drift is realistic. When you're normally flying around, if you have the switch in the LG position, it will just show your distance to the waypoint. So you can see I'm 3.6 nautical miles, 3.5. But when I click the fixed point button, it will kind of freeze and it will save the distance there. So it will save that distance to whatever it was when I flew over the waypoint. So let me clear this out and let me show you an example. Let me fly back over the lake. So I'm going to fly over the lake and I'm going to click the fixed point. And when I click the fixed point, if I have the LG selected, no matter where I fly, this distance to the waypoint is going to be frozen to wherever it was when I clicked the fixed point. So you can see it's basically zero nautical miles. Whatever it reads will be what your error is. You can use this to look and see if the error is realistic. For example, I've been only flying around for a little bit, so I'm going to have pretty much no error. And if I look here, you can see the distance is basically zero. So I can say, all right, that makes sense. It has no error, so that is realistic. And I can validate the fixed point if I want. I'm not going to because it's not the INS isn't drifted, so I don't need to. But let's say I've been flying around for about an hour, and I go over that lake, and I click my fixed point, and instead it says like one or two nautical miles. In that case, I can figure, okay, well I've been flying for about an hour, so it will have drifted a little bit, and if it says one nautical mile, I can say, all right, that seems pretty realistic, a pretty realistic amount of drift, so I can validate it. But let's say... I've been flying around for 30 minutes, and I go over the lake, and I click my fixed point, but the drift here says something like 20 nautical miles. I can figure, 
okay, that doesn't make any sense because I've only been flying for 30 minutes. There's no way it should have drifted that much, so I must be doing something wrong. So this LG position is a good way to kind of tell if you have a realistic amount of error. You want to be really careful when you validate your fixed points because if you're not very accurate with your fixed point, or if you just kind of put something in randomly, it could mess up your whole INS because it's going to move every single waypoint. So when you do your fixed points, you want to make sure you're pretty accurate when you validate them. That was everything to go over for the INS system. Now I'll be going over the navigation display right here. I'm not going to go very deep into this. All the features in this one are pretty much the same as in the CE. The reason I'm going over it is because the controls are different, so you have to do things differently. But the functions are pretty much the same. First of all, there's this little white triangle up here, which points to your current heading, uh, just like the one in the CE. Also, there's a hollow white triangle here, and you can adjust the position with this knob here. And when you adjust it, that adjusts your autopilot heading. Once again, a lot of the stuff here will be really similar to the CE. This skinny knob here with this small white arrow points to your radar or to your VOR depending on what is selected. You use this switch here to select it. If you have it selected to R, that is for radar, so that means the small arrow will point to your radar. You can see if I move my radar cursor, it moves the arrow. If you have the switch selected to V, then it will point to your VOR. My VOR is turned off right now, so it's just stowed to the middle, and you can see there's a warning flag. Just like how there is a warning flag for the small needle, on the, on the right side, there's the warning flag for the big needle. So if something's not working with the big needle, this right warning flag will come on. That was the small needle. It's for the radar or the VOR, depending on the setting. Now, here is the big white needle. This points to either your waypoint or your tack in, depending on what is selected. The distance down here also is either for your waypoint or your tack end. This little circle right here is below a warning box. This circle is basically just telling you that this warning box is the warning for the compass rose. So if there's something wrong with the compass rose, then there will be a warning right here. This switch is for changing between magnetic heading and true heading. If it's pointing to the diamond, it's on magnetic. If it's pointing to the circle, it's true heading. I would leave it on magnetic. This switch here, if you click on the outer knob, that adjusts the mode, and you can see this little white arrow will point to the different dots for the different modes. Then there's this inner knob here that you can use your mouse click to turn left and right. This inner knob only works with these two middle modes, which I'll go over later. Let's go over all the modes now. First is normal navigation mode. It is the second dot from the top when you're pointing to the end. That is just for waypoint navigation, which is what we were doing earlier. In this mode, the arrow will point to the waypoint, and it will show you the distance to the waypoint. Then there's normal tack end mode. That is the other end on the bottom, so if I switch it to this end right here, it's basically the same thing, except the arrow will point to the tack end, and it will show distance to the tack end. Then there's vector addition mode. That You can see there's a VA on top. That is the vector addition mode for the waypoint. And then there's also VA on the bottom. That is vector addition mode for the tack in. Vector addition mode allows you to fly to a certain position based on your waypoint or tack in. For example, I set my waypoint earlier to this building right here. But let's say I don't want to fly here. Let's say I want to fly to this, uh, this uh, runway thing. Well, vector addition lets you dial in a distance and an angle from your waypoint or your tack in. So let's say you can see the distance is two miles away and the angle is 13 degrees. So I would just dial that in and it would let me fly to this instead of my waypoint. That's vector addition mode. It works exactly the same for the tack in and for the waypoints. Then there's these two modes in the middle. There's this one that has a circle with a diagonal line going through. And then there's this one, which is a zero with a horizontal line. These are how you set up the vector addition modes. This one right here with the line going through is for setting the distance. And this one here with the horizontal line is for setting the angle. I'm just going to really quickly do an example of vector addition mode with my waypoint. First, I'm going to set my waypoint. So let's do the waypoint I plugged in earlier, which was waypoint two, which was this little building right here. So like I did earlier, I'm going to go to waypoint two and click the asterisk to enter. And you can see now I have waypoint two selected. Now let's say I don't really wanna to fly to this building. Let's say I wanna to fly to these runways instead. 
I need to find the distance and the angle between my waypoints and where I want to fly to. So what you do is you select your ruler tool. On the F10 map, the ruler tool is this thing on top here. So you select the ruler and you right click on your waypoint and you do the second right click on where you want to fly to. It's kind of hard to see because the numbers are pretty small, but if you look at the numbers on the ruler, you can see 2.2 .2 nautical miles away and you can see the angle. There's two angles here. The blue one is magnetic degrees and the black one is true degrees. When you're putting your angle in for a vector addition, you want to use the true degrees. Let's go ahead and put in the distance first. So I'm going to set the mode to that circle with the line going through. And the distance was 2.2 .2 nautical miles. So you left and right click on this knob in the middle to set it to 2.2. .2. Now let's set the angle. I'm going to click to where it's pointing to the zero with the horizontal line. And on my angle, you can see 0, 13 degrees. Let me dial in 13 degrees here. Now vector addition mode is ready to go. So when I set it to the normal mode, you can see it's just pointing to my waypoint, which is 7.4 miles away. So let's make sure that's accurate. And you can see 7.3 miles, so that's accurate. Now let's select vector addition mode, and it should be 5.3 miles away. Let's just make sure. And you can see 5.3. Let's fly over to it just to make sure it's working. It should bring us to the uh, those runways. And you can see it took me to the runways. That was navigation for the Mirage F1 EE. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.